This one almost killed me, but now it's done. <sighs> Has it really been a week already? Man, time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? I'm gonna be doing a tutorial series about once a week. So if you have subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It'll let you know as soon as I put a new one out. If you took time to comment last week, thank you. I read through every single one of them, and one of the most requested topics that I got was how do you plan your fishing trip. So today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a handful of apps that I use, and then at the end of it, we're going to go into Google Earth and I'm gonna actually draw out the game plan and how I would approach an area based off the information that we got off these apps. Now another thing I'm gonna throw in are just some topics, some insights that I've got from the years on the water and just the, the scientific nature of this time of year to help you find fish and to make more sense of why I'm planning the day the way that I'm planning it. So the thing that I do want you to know about these apps is is even if you're not fishing, look at them every day. I look at them every day. So tomorrow morning shows that we're gonna have a nice southeast wind. But I wanna know over the past couple of days that we have a north, a west, an east wind. What did the wind do to the water that is going to affect the situation that looks nice for me in the morning? These are things that are very important to know and something that is very easy to keep up with and takes very little of your time. All right, jumping right into it. Got our iPad out. I'm gonna open up my fishing folder here. The first app that I look at every time is gonna be WindFinder. WindFinder is gonna give me predictions of what the wind's gonna be, what direction it's gonna be, just about anything that I wanna know about it. It's accurate most of the time. So we're gonna use the Matagorda Bay entrance channel for this particular video. I open it up and right here it shows me the current conditions today and then the current condi or the forecasted conditions tomorrow. First thing I'm gonna do, since it's gonna be in the next day or two, I'm gonna swipe right, and that's gonna give me an hour by hour breakdown. All right, so I'm planning a morning trip tomorrow, so we're gonna focus on 7 a.m. to about 2 p.m. The first thing that I'm gonna see is the direction that the wind is projected to be. So we're starting at a south, moving to a south-southwest, uh, six, six to eight, 10 to 15, for planning purposes, I'm just going to assume that we're gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 miles an hour for the day. Over here is gonna be your forecast, so cloudy, maybe a little bit of rain. Air temperature, barometer. Now the barometer, 29.8, 29.9, I like those numbers. What I really like to see is for them to be fluctuating up or down. If it's 30.1, which I'm, where, is where I'm starting to think things are getting a bit high at, as long as that barometer is moving, it doesn't bother me too much at all. So this is the information that I pick up from WindFinder. Over here is going to be your surf in info, so there's your swells and your spacing. And then over here is going to be the predicted tide. Alright, so the next app that I use is going to be the Isolunar app. The Isolunar app, it gives you today's majors and minors, and then it'll give you majors and minors throughout the course of the month. What it's going to do is gonna give me the time the moon comes up, the time the moon goes down, underfoot, and overhead. That's really all about I all that I use the Isolunar for, but it's valuable to have. So let's look at it. So we have our, our majors and our minors. Now, if, if you don't know, a minor is whenever the moon rises or the moon sets. A major is whenever it's under head, overhead or underfoot. It's that simple. So if you're out on the water and you don't have access to this app and you look over and see the moon about to set, you know a minor is about to kick off. Now we're wanting to fish in the morning, so the one I'm going to pay attention to right here is the 656 to 826. That means I'm going to be in my fishing spot around 615 in the morning and I'm going to push through until probably at least 930 almost all of the big fish that I've ever caught, and I'm talking a 28 inch trout up to, right now my best one's a 32 and a quarter, have been at the beginning or the end of a major or a minor. I'd, I've, I've caught one or two in the middle, but the most of them have been a little bit before or a little bit after that. It's my assumption that during that period, if there's smaller fish around, those bigger fish are just gonna let those guys compete for it all. They're gonna, when, when, when those guys chill out, then the bigger ones will move in. But another little something that hand into you here. 
All right, and the next app I use is Windy. So here, Windy, whenever it opens up, it's gonna show you today's weather from midnight, 24 hours forward, and then it's gonna show you tomorrow's predicted weather. All right, so here we are looking at Windy's predictions, and it's pretty well lining up with what else we've seen. It's showing us a south to a southwest. Our majors and minors are pretty well lining up. 73 degrees. Now, one thing that Windy has that the other ones aren't as as uh, reliable with is the tide. So tomorrow I see here that from about 4.30 in the morning until about 12.30 we have a falling tide. That's going to play a big part on how I fish the areas that I want to go to. Alright so right now this time of year just from the years I've spent on the water the pure science of the situation this time of year the flats are warming up the trout are getting ready to come spawn in the grass and there's there's small bait hatching and it's hiding in that grass. These are reasons that whenever I'm picking a place to go wade fishing for trout, I'm going to pick a shoreline that has some grass. I can get up close to it. I still want some depressions and guts and deeper spots. Since the tide's going out, I want to be around some drains. And so we're going to jump right into Google Earth here and draw up a game plan. The first thing I'm going to take into account are these grass beds through here. If this shoreline didn't have these grass beds, I wouldn't be even close to as interested in it. The second thing is our wind direction at a south-southwest is going to hit it at about this angle here. The third thing to take into note is our tide. Our tide is going to be pulling out all morning. So what that's going to do is each of these drains is going to pull any bait out of these drains. Now the, the way that I can tell that these are better drains is these deeper spots in here is a sign of natural water movement and good water movement. So since we know that the trout are moving up into the grass for spawning, feeding, etc., whenever that tide starts coming out, then what that's going to do is that's going to give them prime feeding spots in the front of each one of these drains. The main thing that I'm going to be looking for whenever I fish these drains is going to be wads of bait on the points and in them. Bait will be out here in wads. If I pull up and I don't see any bait, I'm going to keep going. Sometimes though, whenever you get there, you really, you really need to have some patience because if the tide really hasn't started moving yet, then the fish won't have the, the bait balled up as much. So what I'm going to do, my plan of approach, will be to pull the boat in here, park here, and I'm going to make my way down these shorelines. I'm going to be fan casting the whole way, but once I get to these points right here with the drain, I'm going to really concentrate on this whole area in here, especially if I'm seeing bait balled up um, seeing it being busted, anything like that, I'm going to spend a lot of time in each one of these drains. Now the whole way, of course, I'm fan casting in between each of them. The couple of trips I've had in the past couple of weeks, after I found the right drain, there was really no reason to move for the rest of the trip. Now another tip that I have for you for this time of year is the bait is typically getting smaller. I've been throwing a lot of soft dyes, mirror dyes, uh, pearl chartreuse, something kind of chrome and flashy. Um, the three inch DOA paddle tails, the smaller ones, the mirror lure little johns. A, a glass minnow is kind of a long skinny fish, so the mirror lure little johns, they do a good job of replicating the profile of that fish. Right now this time of year can be a very fruitful time to get out there and go fishing. You just have to look around, see what nature's giving you, and roll with it. All right guys, so that's it. It's really that simple. Know your tide, wind direction, feeding patterns, and temperatures. Put together a game plan. That way whenever you show up in the morning, you're prepared. It, it's better than going out and winging it. Now, it doesn't always work, but at least you've hedged your bets. So if you like this video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Our last video had 3,400 views and counting. 72.8% of the views were unsubscribed viewers. It doesn't change your YouTube a bit. 
it changes mine dramatically. So I would really appreciate it. Now, this video took me about 23 hours of work to do. It, it, it was a real bear to get the information I wanted across to you, but bring it down from 20 minutes to you know 10 or 12 or wherever this is gonna be at. So if you made it to the end, please comment down below, made it. Let me know what topics we should look at doing for next week and the upcoming weeks. I'll read every one of them. I'll appreciate every one of them. We're going to pick one for next week and going to get a new one done. So that's it. Thank you. We'll see you on the next one.